Welcome to the People, Passion, and Purpose podcast, where you will hear from creative small business owners in the trenches every single day, talking story, talking lessons, talking failures, talking truth. I'm your host, Nina L. Kovner. Thank you so much for joining us. Welcome back to the podcast. This week, we have the awesome Erica Santos, leader, salon owner of House Cabello and the new HOC Lab, hairdresser, business partner, dog mom, and all around rad human. Welcome, Erica. Hi, Nina. Thanks for having me today. So stoked. So there's so many things I want to ask you. First off, how long have you been a salon owner? Oh, I um, started becoming a salon owner back in 2011. Uh, My business partner, Andrea, and I purchased a turnkey business and we started House of Cabello back then. That's amazing. I'm so glad you brought up Andrea because, you know, uh, having a business partner is not always easy. Uh, I started Fashion Squared with a business owner, a partner um, who I absolutely love and adore, but but it didn't work out for us. Can you share with us some of the lessons you've learned and how you and Andrea navigate the, the, the idea of a partnership in business? Definitely. Yeah. So essentially, we were in a partnership prior to owning House Cabello. We used to share... A booth rental station. So she worked three days and then I worked three days. So we kind of had that going into it, the trust and, you know, that that connection where we're like, okay, we we do things well together. So let's just go for it. Um, Definitely early on, we both actively worked behind the chair full time and um, realized that we were just kind of landlords and we were renting out the chairs and we thought, well, you know, this isn't really what we thought a business would be. So with the help of some consultants and a lot of hard work, we shifted over to a commission-based salon. And with uh, just defining our roles, I think was really key for us. Andrea has been in the industry a lot longer than I had, and she was getting tired of working behind chair and just was really interested on the business side of things. Mm -hmm. So she she quickly took on that uh, role as the administrative payroll, just running the show, more operational owner. Sure. And, and I just dove right into the creative director side of things. And I, I manage and coach our associate training program and still actively work behind the chair for full days. Well, I think you really hit on something when, when, when you, you said, first of all, trust. I heard you say trust because you had worked together before and, and, and trust is such a huge part of making any relationship work. But but you also uh, said that, that you had clearly defined roles, right? Andrea yeah. had a passion for operations, which is critical, as you know, and you have a passion for the creative side. And and, and that's so important to understand yes. that, you know. Yeah, that definitely evolved through trial and error. You know, we just kind of in the beginning, we're in survival mode and we just were doing things as, as they came. But um, the sooner we define those roles, the better our partnership was and the better our business ran. I love that. And it also, you know, you, you mentioned having an employment based salon and, and you know, as, as leaders, it, it, it also is so important to have those clearly defined roles because then the team has clarity of, of who to come to and who to look for, for what. And, you know, so much of the angst that happens in employment based businesses is 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 not having clarity, right? It's confusion about who does what or who do I talk to about what or, you know, all that stuff that that you clearly, uh, you guys have worked so hard to to define and overcome it. And I think, you know, it's just, it, 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 it really is that simple, but it's certainly not easy, you know, to get to that point. Yeah, we, we sometimes get out of our lanes and then, you know, each quarter sit back down and kind of reassess what shifted or what, who, who's getting sick of doing one role and maybe right. switching, switching things up. But um, our staff definitely knows, you know, who to go to for certain things. But with that being said, too, it's kind of like the mom dad thing, right? So, of course. <laughs> you know, um, Andrea and I have to be tight on our end because 
um, we have seen uh, different personalities and different communication styles that maybe will try to turn on us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't. We all kind of do that sometimes. Though, given that, yeah. given that, given that choice. But I love that 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 you you talked about that you sit down quarterly communication communication. Yeah. I mean, ugh, communication a million times over, it, which seems for some reason to be difficult. With creative folks, why do you think that is? Why do you think like the, I, I've seen it, of course, particularly in the salon industry, but it's not unique to the salon industry. I, I think it's a creative entrepreneur thing. Um, wh- what's up with our fear of, of of honest communication? What do you think that's about? Well, I, I think a lot of it comes with lack of focus too, because, mm. you know, a lot of times it's committing to the communication, right? So since we were with you last year, Nina, at your um, workshop on building a culture and um, Andrea and I have committed to being in the office together on Wednesdays. Love so it. We don't take clients on Wednesdays and it's that commitment that has really shifted our partnership also is gain you know, together touching base because otherwise we're just two ships passing in the night. Sure. So since we were with you last year, you know, we've been committed to that and that's really helped us. But I think the fear comes mostly because we're people pleasers as hairdressers. Mm. So it even carries on over into your relationships, not only with your spouse or your boyfriend or your business partner, because you're still caregiving and making sure that, you know, you're taking care of that person. So sometimes you're not listening to your honest feelings or addressing things that you're feeling immediately because you're protecting them. Right. I would say, I would say I do that. And, and, and as you know, it, that, that, that's all founded in codependency shit. You know, so much of it comes back to that. You know, I, I used to think people pleasing was an attribute was like a something to like be proud of. And, and, and it's definitely something that, you know, we, we go to our therapist for, you know, and work through that and obviously practice. The more you guys do it, the more we get comfortable, right. With meeting and having conversations that may not be so comfortable. Okay. So I'm going to jump a little bit. You talked about, um, you both were independent stylist and um, you chose to create an employment based salon. And you know, what's interesting. I see that pattern over and over and over independence when deciding to take that next step to open a standalone business. Many times they go towards employment based salon. And because you're in California, you are in the land of independence. Why did you choose an employment model? That's a great question. And I think um, looking back at 2013 is when we shifted. It was because we were in a small space and we were just independently renting out the chairs. We kind of felt like we were doing the exact same thing we were doing as independent contractors without any perks of being a business owner. So you can only raise the rent so much per month or per year. You can only really generate X amount of revenue as in having everyone independent contractors, there's no way to make more money. Mm. So we thought uh, on a business end, let's explore what it looks like to, to grow people and bring in associates and work with commission based model. Um, I now probably will shift my mindset five years later about what that looks like for us. And, you know, we will go into that with the lab too and why we developed the lab. But um, I think it was based on recommendations from business coaches that we trusted and hired. And they, they did help us grow, Mm -hmm. but I think they fell short in other categories, which I've shared with you before, Nina. Um, You know, we knew our numbers, we knew our projections, we knew our goals, we knew everything on the numerical side, but we didn't know our why. We didn't, we didn't know our culture. We didn't know what we were doing on um, like an intimate level, I guess. Like sure. we knew the, we knew the numbers, we knew everything about our budget guidelines, but we really didn't know why we were doing what we were doing. Right. Right. So we almost went backwards. Like Usually you should start with your why. <laughs> well, of course, that's Simon Sinek recommends at least, you know. Well, Absolutely. And I, I, I did join you until I think 2000 and either 15 or 16. Uh-huh. So, so, you know, I think it was 
a combination of wanting to have a, a profitable business, but also naiveness by hiring coaches that kind of told us what to do. Gotcha. So let's talk about let's talk about the um, HOC lab, because I, I, there's there's two things. First of all, I want tell us about the HOC lab and, okay. and what that the, the thought process was. Why are you expanding? Why are you creating a new mo- new business model, um, what that's all about. And then I'm going to kind of parlay that into, aren't you fucking overwhelmed? And how do yes. you deal? And how do you deal with that? Yes. So first tell us about HOC lab and kind of that whole thought process. And then how are you managing this, this second location expansion craziness? Well, I think we're a little bit crazy. Actually, I know we are. So sometimes, <laughs> sometimes um, being the more artistic manic side, I bring these ideas to Andrea and she just trusts me and she knows that we do try things and usually it works out. So we kind of go just like all or none. So I saw this opportunity. There was a, an existing salon here in our town, downtown Pleasanton, that was already a hair salon. So what that means is it's already zoned the plumbing's there it's an easy conversion to build a salon otherwise you're dealing with permits and tons of fees that aren't really realistic for small business owners Mm. so we jumped on the opportunity because it was just a woman retiring and there was a salon there and it was 25 years old it obviously needed a gut but the the bones were there sure so I looked at Andrea and I said we need to do this because historically speaking we have too many senior stylists that are at our top level in our structure at House of Cabello. And historically speaking, we can no longer grow them as individuals or as hairstylists. So we're going to lose them. We're going to have a walkout. Likely, possibly. Yes. Yes. Historically speaking, right? Mm -hmm. So I said, okay, well, why don't we just create an environment for our senior stylists or anyone in our team that feels they want independence Let's build them a rental salon. It's down the street. Their clientele's here. They obviously have gone through our program and are a reflection of our culture and our our team. So we felt confident. We still feel confident that our brand is still going to be a good representation at the lab as it is here. It's Mm -hmm. just with it's just with them having the independence of their schedule, their pricing. And to do what they want. I mean, I did it. I left after five years of commission. Right, right. I, I love I, I love that idea of thinking through the career path to the to all the way through to when I I, I am ready to open my own business. Not everyone's going to be, but certain people are. And, and if I am and I love House Cabello, I love the House Cabello brand. I love the family. Gosh, wouldn't it be nice for me to have an opportunity to be an independent business owner? And here you go. You say, yes, we agree. Here's HOC Lab. So I think we were progressive because they hadn't come to us. We did lose one senior stylist last year after we left you, Nina. Last year, we came back to her deciding to leaving. But that was fine because that was an example of someone that could no longer grow in our current business model. So I said, you know, if we don't be progressive here and think before it happens, we're going to get a walkout. So maybe we could have, right? Or so, lose valuable people that you love and adore, correct. you know? Yeah, yeah that, totally. That, and that's what our why is, you know, after we left you, we really, really commit to growing people. And so if we can no longer grow them in our commission model, then we are not sticking to what our why is. Sure, sure. I love that. Congratulations. Thank you. So we're calling it a hybrid model. Um, I think it does bring different challenges and and going into it with the chaos of trying to manage both. Um, You know, Andrea and I ran into some challenges with the hired help because, you know, everything always costs more and takes longer, right? With yes. any, any remodel or any build out, that's just the that's salon owners, small business owners of any kind. Listen up. It costs yes. more and takes more time. Everyone would Absolutely. attest to that. I can, I can promise you. Absolutely. And then of course, too, we're paying rent over there because the landlord wasn't willing to give us any tenant improvement because it was already a salon and just it it wasn't part of the deal. So we are definitely um, pushing ourselves financially. We did take out a loan to consolidate some existing debt from our first build out. Um, Two years ago, we moved to a bigger location 
at House of Cabello. And now with the lab, two years later, we just wanted to consolidate everything. But um, really, I think the focus is just seeing the end. You know, we just pushed through it this last four months. It's been very challenging physically, emotionally, financially. I even um, went ahead and sold my house. Mm. I don't think the the main focus wasn't to put it into the business, but it it was for me to not feel overwhelmed with financial responsibility. So by selling my house, I was able to pay off all of my personal credit card debt, my husband's car. Um, you know, I was able to fill, I could breathe on a personal level. Now I have business debt, which it's, it's manageable by the business, but, um, it, it was part of the process. You know, I even had yeah. to sell my house. Yeah. So. And, and, and anyone listening right, right now, we're not giving you financial advice. This is not a financial advice podcast no, by any start. so so we're not saying sell your house and you know mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No, i mean you everyone has to do what what, what fits for them um let, let me ask you something because you know the, the the amount of investment not fine even financial but the amount of emotional investment and physical investment um th- this obviously is driven by passion and purpose and i mean what what does that mean to you? That, that passion, is that your fuel? Is that what you use for your fuel? What's driving all this in your core, in your core being? Definitely. I'm, I think being a middle child of six kids, both my parents are immigrants and, you know, they're tough and hardworking. And I think that was instilled Mm. in me in an early age and also a very competitive on a personal level, just an athlete and, an overachiever, people pleaser. Um, I think I don't, I don't want to be a failure at whatever I started. So that's, what's driving me on a core level is my commitment. I'm just not a quitter. So right now that commitment is, is kind of guiding me through the hard times. And I know once we get open and running and everything is, is a little bit back to normal, that clarity is going to come back to me. Absolutely. I love that you said that commitment gets you through the hard times. The The idea that that any of this is easy is, is by far one of the th- most common things I see um, with, it's not. with small business owners or creatives in general that are like, I'm going to go open a salon or I'm going to go start an education company or I'm going to. And then it's like, whoa, this is hard. And it's like, yeah. <laughs> It's so hard, Nina. And I would not want to do this without a business partner because I don't have the managerial mindset or skills to be organized, to pay the bills, to keep us on Mm. with our, you know, BOE taxes and our (laughs) our weekly orders. Like I would fail my first year in business without a business partner that is like minded like Andrea, but manages all the, uh, you know, internal stuff. So, so you're also throwing out some massive self-awareness because that's another thing, right? Is that if we're not aware that that's not our thing, then we really will drown, right? I mean, totally. we really will drown. And, and I love I so many nuggets of this. Let me just ask you, let me ask you one more thing. And then, and then, um, and then God, I can't even believe oh, we've been talking forever. Okay. Um, give me one of your greatest lessons that you've learned since being an owner? My greatest lesson that I've learned since being a business owner is it's okay to let go and it's okay to delegate and it's okay to have people help you and do you. You can't do it all. Oh, I love that. I love that. So that's going to lead me to, do you have a favorite quote? Hmm. Favorite quote. Well, I'm going to probably say it wrong because I kind of have like, you know, a little bit of Erica isms. I make things up. (laughs) I love that. um, (laughs) But I do have one that's like you do what you know. And then when you know better, you do better. Yes. Yes. So I'm not sure who said that one, but it's an Oprah. It's an Oprah. And I'm not sure what if she was inspired. I feel like it's a Mike so, Angelou though, because yeah, I don't feel, prop, you I don't know feel what? like I really right. like Oprah. So yeah. I, I don't know. <laughs> Hold on. Let me I'm Googling it. <laughs> when you know better, you do better. It is my Angelou. Yes. When you know better, you do better. Yep. It's so true. It's so true. 
And do the know, best you can until you know better. Yep. Then when you know better, do better. That's awesome. Yeah. That's I vision. mean, in all aspects of life, right? Yes. Oh my gosh. It is. It is such a, it's such an important, such an important reminder that really speaks to me, um, speaks to that recovering perfectionist in me. Yes. You know? Yes. Because a daily challenge. Yes, exactly. Exactly. That perfectionist quits because they're like, well, if I can't do it perfect or they never start. And, you know, and, and, and that speaks to that commitment is that, that you shared is, is that commitment gets you through the tough times. And, um, when you know better, do better. Totally. Erica, thank you so much. Where can we find you on the internet? Oh, thanks, Nina. Um, I am at House of Cabello, um, co-owner at House of Cabello. And then my personal IG account is Hair by Erica Santos. And then you can follow us at our new um, HOC Lab. And the HOC Lab is that collaboration of our team working independently at the new rental space. I love it. I'm so happy for you. I can't wait to watch the lab uh, unfold. It's thank you. It, it's incredible and it's inspiring. And, and you know, thank you for your honesty. Yeah, and your vulnerability. You've taught, you've taught me how to be that way. Thank you. Um, with you know, just a lot of like-minded people and you know, kind people like you, Nina. I'm learning a lot about myself, and I appreciate you. Oh, I appreciate you. Thank you so much for sharing your story, and thank you to everyone for listening to this week's episode. I hope everyone has a wonderful day wherever you are. Much love to everyone. Bye. Thank you so much for listening to today's podcast. To learn more about Passion Squared, you can visit us at passionsquared.net. You can find us on the gram and on Facebook at Passion Squared. And be sure to subscribe and share with your friends. We're so grateful. Thank you so much for joining us. Have an awesome day, guys. Love you.